Hey, it's your good friend, it's your pal, it's your compadre, it's uh, TC, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the big show. Of course, the show is Hey, TC. <laughs> and I am the aforementioned a TC, and it is, what is it, it's Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, February something, I don't know. I'm not sure if I should date the shows or not. I guess that's one of the things that uh, we'll discuss as the show evolves. Um, but it's Thursday, uh, February 9th of 2012 and, uh, lots of good stuff in the uh, store today. Of course, uh, what's the show all about? The show is all about my journey first and foremost. And then, uh, the second thing is always uh, a little twin cities talk. Uh, I, uh, I reside here in the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul up in the great state of Minnesota. Uh, and I love it. And we're having quite a winter here this year. Very nice. Very sexy. <laughs> Hardly any snow, unfortunately, but uh, it really hasn't been that cold. So, anyways, so we'll do a little Twin Cities talk today, and then finally we'll wrap it up with first customer. I'm calling it first customer. What is first customer? I want to be your first customer. If you are in a crappy job and you want to start a, and you want to start a new company, your own company on the side, obviously, or if you're disabled or if you're unemployed or if you're on welfare. And even if you're on social security and you're retired, come on, we know, uh, everybody knows that you can contribute something. Uh, and, um, I want to be your first customer. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell you short and, uh, uh, say that, uh, I might not be able to afford, uh, I can afford everything because I can't. I mean, if you say, Hey, you know, I've opened up my own architecture business and, uh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like you as my first client, uh, and I say, well, can you architect me a house there, buddy boy? And uh, you say, I knew. Not for uh, less than um, 85000 I'd be like, well, we're going to have to come to some sort of other uh, agreement because I can't afford that. But, hey, you know. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're thinking about being a cook or a baker or starting your own website or your own podcast. Hey, oh, or, uh, your own blog. You know, there's a million ways to make money on the internet and, uh, it's just waiting there for you. And so, you know, anyways, so we'll talk about, uh, the first customer stuff, uh, coming up and just two shakes of a monkey's bum. What's going on in my journey? Well, my journey is that I've been eating better since, uh, last, uh, Monday, this past Monday, uh, and I'm starting to feel better. I've, I've had the blase blues, you know, uh, where you kind of, your body's adjusting from having crap to having actually good food. Got a little exercise yesterday. Uh, and, uh, today I'm feeling, uh, not too shabby. I think that's how I'm going to label it. So, um, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good there. Um, so that's uh, part of my journey. Am I still scared, bitter and angry? You know, I think that's what some of the stuff we all face. Uh, in our daily lives. Uh, um, let's see, what am I scared about? Yeah, I'm scared about a couple of things with, uh, the business, uh, Gen Cat Games. You know, there's, there's a couple things that are scaring me. Um, but I'm trying to fight through it and move forward. Um, that's the, that's the business I also run. Um, so if you're a fan of games, you can check us out. Or if you don't want to check us out, you don't have to check us out. Yeah, it's your call in the end. Um, hopefully if you do check us out, you find something that you like on the site. Um, what else? Um, as far as bitter, I don't think there's anything I'm bitter about right now. Angry about, um, no, maybe worried, maybe worried and scared. I guess worried and scared are kind of a little similar. So, but, uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, also one other show note here. If, um, <laughs> apparently I tested it, I thought it worked, but apparently it didn't. So I'm, I'm, I've gone in and reset back up TC at Hey TC. So if you want to send me an email, uh, telling me about, um, you know, what, what's up with you and maybe you're starting your own business and it doesn't have to be anything more than just a, you know, a card table in your garage or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, your dining room table, you can start a business at your dining room table. I mean, look at, uh, and it doesn't matter how old you are. Look at Colonel Sanders. Well, he started uh, Kentucky fried chicken when he was 69 years old or something like that, or 76, I forget, but you know, and, and even if you're, uh, you know, 14 years old, you can always start a business, you know, 
So, anyways, uh, and I'm you know I'm happy to help out there. You know, if you got some questions about running a business, because that's what I've done the last five years, and and in some ways I've done it very unsuccessfully. And trust me, doing it very unsuccessfully, you learn a hell of a lot. Holy cow! So. And uh, one of the things that I need to work on is my people skills. I know that uh, I always get invited to these events, you know, where you're mingling with people and conventions and stuff. And it's it's just really hard for me to um, go up to people and say hello. I just I feel so self conscious. Um, I can I can I can talk to someone on the phone. I can charm the pants off of them. No pun intended. Um, but uh, yeah, in person, I just I just freeze up like a like a deer in the headlights, baby, like a deer in the headlights. So I don't know. Well, so I'm working on that. All right. So, anyways, getting back to the original point there, TC at HeyTC.com. If you want to send me an email, say hello. Uh, if you like the show, I'd appreciate it if you told a friend. Right now, there's no other ways that I uh, monetize this show. And come on, it's all about making money. If you're going to do something, you got to make money. And it's a slow build for me. Um, I'm working on the website. Um, I posted the last show. It's one of those things where I just need to have, have the time to actually kind of start building out the website the way I think or the way you, more importantly, want it to evolve. Because in the end, I want to serve you. It ain't me. It ain't me. It ain't you serving me. It's me serving you. So whatever I can do to help you. Let me know to create uh, an environment that you want to participate in. And, um, you know, anyways, we'll talk more about the first customer stuff uh, in, in, in just a little bit. So, hey, T, uh, TC at HeyTC.com. <laughs> One of the things with uh, doing the show is evolving. And, and like I said, I, I just started the show just to start doing it because sometimes you just got to start doing something uh, to be successful at it, you know. Uh, I got a friend of mine um, who is in New York who um, I was talking to a buddy of his one time and he said, you know what, you know what makes Tim really, really successful? I said, what's that? Is that he shows up every day and he does the job. And I'm like, oh yeah. Anyway, so anyway, speaking of Tim, I'll just say it's, it's a guy named Tim Tibbetts uh, who runs a website called majorgeeks.com. Uh, and it's a cool website, majorgeeks.com. If you want to check it out, um, if you're, you know, if you're having problems with, I don't know, whatever, he needed some new software. Hey, that's where I go to download my software. It's not meant to be a commercial. He's just a really good guy. And, uh, him and his, uh, buddy Jim have done it for a long time and they, and they do it really damn well. Um, so check them out if you like. Um, little Twin Cities talk here. I love talking the Twin Cities, baby. It's what I'm all about, mama girl. Yeah. Anyways, one of the things that uh, I see is going on is this uh, Powerball jackpot now. On uh, Wednesday night, there was no winner, and now it's uh, $310 million, which I think is a record or close to being a record. Not sure. I know it's inflated now because they've raised, they've raised the price of Powerball to $2. You know, and I know a lot of people will always tell you that, you know, it's a, I've bought power, well, let me, let me, let me preface this by saying I've bought Powerball tickets in the past just for the sole reason of getting to bed at night. Because if I can, you know, it's just that little fantasy that you have and, and, and that fantasy can put me to sleep. You know, what would, what would I do if I won $310 million? Well, I've gotten to the point in my, um, life where I would like hire a personal assistant right away. To, because I would be inundated with people calling me, you know, people coming out of the woodwork, um, you know, uh, you know, scam artists, you know, and I would send everybody through that conduit first before they even ever got to me. You know, obviously, you know, if you're talking family, you know, what do you do with family? Yeah, you want to take care of your family, but you don't want to make them dependent on you. Like, so what's happened with the government? We'll get to that in a second here with the first customer segment, but. So anyways, that, that's, and then of course, I, I've always wanted to own a snowmobile. Uh, I've never owned a snowmobile, never ridden a snowmobile. My fantasy in life is very simple. I want to go snowmobiling. That's, that's the extent of my <laughs> existence. You know, I'm a simpleton. It, it's just never come to pass. You know, I could afford to go rent a snowmobile probably. Could I afford to buy a snowmobile? I don't know if I would. Certainly not this winter. We've hardly had any snow and I love the snow. But anyway, so, but, uh, 
I just, I just think about that. You know, if I buy a lottery ticket, what would I do with the money? You know, and you know, and, I, and that helps me fall asleep. I never expect to win if, when I do buy one, and it's not that often. But maybe on Saturday I'll go buy a two dollar ticket. But anyway, so one of the things about the Powerball, though, that's interesting to me is I've never understood the payout on that thing. I've never really investigated it fully. But you know, hey, okay, you know, so I buy my two dollar power ticket, or you buy your two dollar power ticket. And come Saturday night or Sunday morning, you wake up and you find that you've won $310 million. Well, you, you, you sign your ticket right away. They always say, sign your ticket. And then I'd put it in <laughs> as a, some sort of secure device. Like if you have like a little personal safe or something or whatever, you know, secure it, put it in a book. Um, and then uh, you're supposed to, I guess, seek out the lottery thing. The last thing I do is, I guess, I'd call everybody and say, "Hey, I just won the lottery." That's the last thing I would do. I, I would, and I, I wouldn't want any press from it either. But that's just me. Probably help the show, but <laughs> and, the, and the website, Gen Cat Games. But you know, that's that's not me. Um, but anyways, um, so you win the three hundred and ten million dollars, and they say, "Okay, you want it over twenty years, or do you want a lump sum payment of like a hundred and seventy million, which is just over fifty percent, or maybe fifty percent?" So in this case, it'd be one hundred and sixty-five million. So my question is, okay, I've won three hundred and ten million. What happens to the other one hundred and sixty-five million? I guess this is the f- stuff that goes to the environment and the teachers' unions. I mean, the ed- education of children. So, um, yeah, I've never understood that. And then, of course, so you, you see, okay, so you walk away with three hundred and ten million. I guess the state and the teachers, I mean, the uh, education system and the environmental, uh, the EPA or whatever, the Minnesota stuff for environment, uh, takes their cut, and then there's one hundred and sixty-five million left over. So that's what you get. Well, then Uncle Sam comes a call in and says, "Hey, forty percent of that is mine, sucker." So you've just won three hundred and ten million dollars, but but by the time it's all over, you're, you're walking away with. Let me get my calculator here. Out. One sixty-five times point six is ninety-nine million dollars. Still a pretty good haul, but hey, it's t- you, just, you just got uh, you just got bent over the table for two hundred million dollars. Anyways, I wish they'd be a little more upfront about the jackpot amounts, but. Uh, Still, maybe on Saturday night I'll buy a ticket and then uh, dream of uh, going snowmobiling one day. Anyway, so there you go. Hey, um, a couple of uh, music notes I want to mention. Van Halen. I'm a big fan of Van Halen. Raised in the 80s. Fell in love with the 1984 album, which, of course, had Jump on it. Panama, Hot for Teacher, All Wait. And my personal favorite, House of Pain. Uh, and then and then once I discovered you know that album when I was, what, 14, I guess, I went back and looked at the entire, you know, first uh, five albums of uh, the Van Halen career and just fell in love with it. Ended up picking up the guitar, Eddie Van Halen, my inspiration for learning how to play guitar. I still have a guitar to this day. haven't played it that much. And to be honest with you, I'm not that good of a player. In fact, I'm kind of terrible. If I was playing with a band, I think I could fake my way through a song. But if you told me to get up on stage and sing, and I'd never sing... If you told me to get up on stage and sing and play a song, I I I I wouldn't have a shot at it. I I I'd, I'd go right down the toilet. So, but anyways, the new Van Halen CD came out yesterday. The first one with David Lee Roth in 28 years. 28 years? Oh my God, I'm old. <laughs> 28 years! Holy crap! Of course, uh, Van Halen coming to uh, the Excel Center, I believe, back, what is it, May 18th, I think uh, I said uh, the other show. Anyway, so, um, but the new album, really good. Really, It's really, really heavy. It's a lot heavier than I thought it would ever be. They, they actually went back into their catalog and grabbed, like, s- some songs that they had done, you know, when they were first starting out as a band back in the mid-'70s and that, that, that were never recorded. So they went back and re-recorded a bunch of them, wrote some of the, rewrote some of the lyrics, and uh, that's about half the album. And then the other half of the album is, is you know, brand brand new stuff that nobody's ever heard. And the reason why the only the, the, some of the people have heard some of these older demos is because, well, it's Eddie Van Halen, and Eddie Van Halen is kind of worshipped in the guitar community. So people are going to find those old live performances that you had back in the seventies, and you know, put them on a bootleg CD or, you know distribution on the internet so 
Anyways, I'm really enjoying the album. Really good stuff. Song on there called Honey, Honey Baby Sweetie Doll, uh, which is really heavy, really good. And another one called Stay Frosty. I think I should end my shows instead of saying, uh, see you in the emergency room. I think it should be just now. Stay frosty, my friends. Anyway, so, uh, actually, uh, speaking of Van Halen, I can, I got a little story to tell you. Back in, uh, what was it, 1986, the first tour with Sammy Hagar. So David Lee Roth had left Van Halen at the end of like 85. The Van Halen brothers and Michael Anthony call up uh, or get a hold of Sammy Hagar, who's had his own solo career at that point with I Can't Drive 55 and a lot of other great stuff. And uh, they ask him to be the lead singer of Van Halen. He says, yeah, sure, why not? So he becomes the lead singer, and they put out an album called 5150, and they launch a tour. Well, when the tour dates were announced, you know, I was, what, uh, 17 then at that point. Uh, it was the summer so me and a friend of mine, Kevin, who I emailed yesterday, actually, about the new Van Halen album, or Tuesday when it came out, because he also played guitar. So I haven't seen this guy in like 25 years, it seems. Maybe it's been like 20 years since I've seen him, but uh emailed the guy, uh, and we kind of exchanged some uh, thoughts on the new Van Halen album, so that was kind of fun. And then, uh, uh, so me and Kevin, and then another uh, guy named uh, Chris, and uh, his cousin or something, uh, Ramey, and Van Halen had a song called Jamie's Crying, so of course, during this whole episode, he got, this kid got nothing but Jamie's Crying, Ramey's Crying, so anyways. But uh, we decided we're going to camp out overnight For Jam and Company 7 presents Van Halen at the St. Paul Civic Center with opening artist Bachman Turner Overdrive. What? Bachman Turner Overdrive? Even in 1986, Bachman Turner Overdrive wasn't cool. You know, it was like an old man, which is actually funny because Van Halen's opening act this year on their tour is Cool of the Gang. Which I actually love because I'm a big Cool in the Gang fan. Who could not love Jungle Boogie and Misled and uh, and Celebration? I actually like that. So uh, maybe, maybe I'll go. I haven't been to a concert in a long time, but uh, maybe maybe the Van Halens will entice me with uh, Cool in the Gang opening. I just love that. So anyway, so we decide to go down to Dayton's in Roseville because you know in those those old days, you know, you'd have to line up for tickets at Dayton's. Um, or at, I guess, the St. Paul Civic Center uh, specifically. So we go to Dayton's in Rosedale, and we camp out um, and wait for the tickets. And we're in line, so we're there all night. There's there's maybe another 50 people camped out uh, for tickets because we wanted really good tickets. And, and as, as I remember, we kind of had crappy tickets. I mean, we, were, we weren't on the floor. We were on, like, the left, the stage left and up a ways and just, like, I don't know. And then, you know, people would have to call in for tickets. I know it's still kind of a rigmarole if you're going through Ticketmaster. Ugh, that's a nightmare. That's what we need. We need someone to invent a, a, a more, but, but I mean, Ticketmaster is, it's, it's, it's like politics with Ticketmaster. They've monopolized the industry. So, but anyways, so we camp out overnight and we take turns. We take shifts going over to Denny's which was across uh, from Roseville on, uh, what is that, uh, Fairview? I'm thinking of, yeah, Fairview. Uh, when we could walk across, walk across the parking lot, across Fairview to a Denny's there. I believe it was a Denny's. And we'd hang out for an hour, you know, have a Coke or something, and then uh, go back, and then the Chris and Ramey would uh, would, would return and, uh, and um, you know, and then go to Denny's themselves, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so morning comes. We've stayed up all night. We get the Van Halen tickets, as it turns out. They aren't that good. And then that same night, we're going to see Loverboy. Yes, I said Loverboy. Come on now. It was the 80s. So that night, we're going to Loverboy. So we go home, and we sleep for a couple hours, and then get up, and then go to see Loverboy, once again, at the St. Paul Civic Center. Uh, Not a lot of bands. I I, I didn't see a lot of bands in the 80s at at uh, at the Met Center. I guess I, I saw Def Leppard there, and I saw Bon Jovi open for 38 Special. I also saw, I guess I saw, I, I saw David Lee Roth there on his solo tour. Uh, what am I saying? Yeah, and I saw White Snake and uh, Motley Crue, I think, I believe. So, anyways, that was quite the show. Oh boy, do I got a story I could tell you one day about uh, my White Snake, White Snake and Motley Crue. So, anyways, um, so 
looking forward to Van Halen's, or I'm really loving Van Halen's new album, and of course they're coming to the Twin Cities. Also, I see, hey, Madonna coming to the Twin Cities for the uh, first time since 1987, which is, I guess, hard to believe. 25 years since Madonna's been in the Twin Cities. I think she's playing the Excel Center as well. Um, I'm not going to crap all over Madonna. You know, I grew up in the 80s. There was some of her stuff when she first came out. I mean, come on. I was a guy. I was, what, 13, 14 years old, 15, when she released Like a Virgin. Of course, I'm going to like that song. Did you see the video? Did you see the MTV performance? You remember that? Hey, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So anyways, I'm a guy. What can I say? But anyway, so, uh, but what, once, uh, to quote, uh, Mr. Blue from Reservoir Dogs, once Ma, uh, Madonna got into that Papa Don't Preach phase, I tuned out. And that's pretty much true. But I will admit, Madonna can write a song, um, and her music is still pretty relevant. Uh, and, and there's a lot of Madonna songs that are actually pretty damn good. I'm not gonna crap all over her just because, trying to be cool. I like all music if it's good music, you know. I'd take Van Halen any day over Madonna, but, you know, Madonna, not so bad, so. I won't be going to see Madonna, but uh, I guess it's fun that she's finally coming back to the Twin Cities. Uh, what else is going on? A couple other things before we get out of here. Uh, I wanted to mention, uh, I see Mattel, Michelle Tafoya, who, of course, is the sideline reporter for NBC Sports uh, on Sunday Night Football and, of course, during the Super Bowl. Uh, glad to see a Minnesota girl, even though she's not a native. I think she's natively from North Carolina, if I remember. I remember stuff. The most inconsequential stuff, but I remember it. I think he's, I think she's from uh, North Carolina. Of course, she came to the Twin Cities, I think, in the 90s and worked at KFAN. I always liked her on KFAN. I thought she was, I, I, at first, when, you know, a woman doing sports, come on, you know, once again, you know, is she going to know her, her P, P's and Q's? But boom, you know, she was, she was on top of her game and I was really impressed with her. I always liked her, kind of, not, I didn't really follow her career, but I was a fan of her. And then when she started working on, uh, at CCO, WCCO Radio here. Um, and uh, after, I guess, it was Don Shelby retired. And I never understood Don Shelby as the replacement for Steve Cannon. Uh, you know, Don Shelby, okay, you're a fine anchor, but no. Uh, radio, no. And I don't think so. I mean, Steve Cannon is up there in the annals of history as far as radio goes. I'm inspired by Steve Cannon. I love Steve Cannon. Thought he was brilliant. Um, you know, he built CCO along with Boone and, Eric, Boone and Erickson there. And, um, to see Don Shelby fill that role was very disappointing. When Michelle Tofoya got it, I thought, well, you know, this isn't so bad. I, I like Michelle. I listened to that show a little bit. Uh, I thought it was always a good show. Uh, but now she's leaving and now I guess they're swinging John Williams, who does mornings on CCO to afternoons now to fill that legendary Steve Cannon role. And they actually invoked Steve Cannon's name when they announced that Michelle Tafoya was leaving CCO, but I think is still going to be affiliated with CCO maybe a little bit to concentrate on her kind of TV career. And so I was mortified that they invoked uh, Steve Cannon's name because John Williams, I've tried to listen to him, and I can't stand the guy. I just, it, it's just one of those things. I mean, maybe he's the nicest guy in the world. And if I ever talk to him, great, but it's just not my kind of show. It's just, eh, it's just, ugh, it's too metrosexual, I think, you know? I, I don't know. I, I'm just not into the whole, you know, metrosexual thing, you know? Uh, it's just, you know, give me, uh, I, I, I could probably take a gay guy better on the radio than, uh, than a metrosexual. But anyways, whatever. But uh, so, yeah, so that's disappointing. So CCO is, WCCO radio is kind of, uh, there's nothing left there, is there? There's, it's just been, the bones have been picked clean. I remember when uh, it got sold to CBS, uh, what, 10 years ago, and there's nothing left. It's just a big old crop fest now. They've got the Timberwolves, actually. They lucked into a pretty good Timberwolves thing. Yeah, I expected the Timberwolves to lose uh, last night in Memphis, you know. They actually kind of got it a little close, but they played really crappy. They definitely need Kevin Love back. Ricky Rubio's like, oof, this team is horrible without Kevin Love. And yeah, we saw its weaknesses, man. It was, uh, if, uh, and Rubio didn't have a good game either last night, but, uh, you know, one and one without Kevin Love. And hey, yeah, I don't blame him for stepping on, uh, <laughs> I call him Adam Carolla, the guy from uh, Houston. He looks a little like Adam Carolla. 
Um, I don't blame him for stepping on his chest and his face because after the play the week previously when Adam Carolla or whatever Scalia, whatever his name is, uh, threw the ball off of uh, Kevin Love's crotch out of bounds, you know, and there's going to be payback there eventually, you got to figure. So anyways, but... Uh, so there you go. That's a little Twin Cities talk today. First customer, first customer. I want to be your first customer. I want to be your first customer. Can I be your first customer? I'm begging you. Let me be your first customer. All right, I've said that enough. So anyways, one of the things that's uh, interesting to me um, is... Well, I, I saw a report yesterday that uh, 23%, there's been a 23% increase um, of government dependence since Obama's taken office. Now, to be fair, the amount of people sucking on the government tit, as I call it, and when I say tit, I'm going to call I'm, I'm going to call it the way I see it. It's disability. It's welfare. It's unemployment. It's you know EBT cards. It's it's Social Security. It's Medicare. It's Medicaid. And, you know, I know there needs to be safeguards, and I understand that. But to the point we've gotten now where I think certain politicians believe and see that the more people that suck on the government tit, the better it is for those politicians, because then they can say, if you don't vote for me, the other guy or the other girl is going to take away your dependency, your, your check from us, you know? And, and it's just, it's, it's a bad cycle that we're in, you know? I think this is the largest increase since Jimmy Carter was in office. But once again, to be fair to Obama and, uh, President Obama and President uh, Carter, that the line's been going up. I mean, it's been going up since, you know, the forties and probably earlier, probably since Woodrow Wilson was president. Um, so it's increasing and it's only going to get, higher and higher. It's it's never going to get cut, it seems. So, I mean, I, I, I think personally we're headed to kind of being like Europe. And I know that's what a lot of people want. They want us to be more like Europe. But I also see Europe as a bunch of loser countries at this point. In fact, I'm surprised that Germany has remained in the European Union because so many of those other countries are just dragging Germany down. Because Germany, while it has its problems, and, and trust me, jeepers, they like to start wars. We know that. You know, they're also, they're also still kind of a thriving economy and dependence on government hasn't gotten to the point where it is, say, in France or, you know, Nor Norway or Denmark or even, 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 uh, England. So, but, uh, one of the things, the point of doing this show, and I have a point to this, uh, this rant I'm having is that I personally, what can I do to help someone who is on disability, welfare, unemployed, or even just in a crappy job you don't like? You know, I can encourage you by being your first customer. I want to be your first customer. Like I said, I may not be able to afford your services, but I'll sure as hell try. And if I can't, maybe we can reach you some sort of barter deal or something, you know? That's what we used to do in the old days, right? And I think this is a way to try to encourage people and, you know, to you know, create their own business. And it's not that hard. I mean, you know, you don't need to get a business license. You know, you can just start your own business and, you know, you do it off the grid. And then if you get big enough, you know, obviously the government's going to want to get involved and blah, 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 you know, and, and you deal with it, you know, but it's not that bad. I know it's sometimes painted as, oh, you can't do it because of regulations and stuff. And yeah, regulations are hurting certain industries in this country. I'm not going to lie to you on that, but in the end, if you want to start your own business, you know, you're going to be okay. Uh, still at this point, you know, may change in, you know, another 50 years where it's nearly impossible to actually start a business, but right now you can. So I want to encourage you to start your own business and I want to be your first customer. And then as we evolve this idea, I'd like to put your businesses on my website on HeyTC.com where pe other people who maybe listen to the show can seek out um, your business, you know, is it like a recommended business? It's kind of a, an approved, uh, a, a TC approved business, you know, just because, you know, I want to be your first customer, you know, and of course, if you make a crap product, I'm probably not going to be your second customer. So keep that in mind. But, you know, as long as you put an effort in, you know, you'll be good to go. You'll do well. So anyways, so, all right, that's the show for today. 
I liked it. I'm feeling pretty good now. Boom. Let's put it in the books, baby. I'm putting it in the books. February 9th of 2012. Boom. It's in the book. ATC. I'll see you in the emergency room.